isn't just against the EU. Our battle, if you think about it, really, is against the political class in this country who've sold us down the river, but not just to the EU. Not just to the EU. I want to highlight, for those that perhaps haven't seen it, the recent extradition case of a businessman, a retired businessman, called Christopher Tappin. Now, I have to declare an interest in this. I've, I've known Chris Tappin for nearly 40 years, particularly the whole of my life. Uh, we live close to each other. We're members of the same golf club. I knew his father. I know his wife. I know the children. So he is a friend of mine. And I do very much take the view that a businessman, successful businessman, living in a big detached house, whose children have left home and are doing well, I take the view that a businessman in that position would not have risked everything on a transaction that stood to make him the handsome sum of $500. <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. But actually, folks, the issue isn't whether Mr. Tappin has or has not done anything wrong. The issue is that a 65-year-old retired businessman who has never been in trouble with the law for the whole of his life in this country, indeed, he's only ever had one speeding ticket throughout his whole adult life, the issue is that that man has been extradited to America. I'm also concerned about the judicial system that he's going to. You know, I used to think of America as being the land of the free. But I'm afraid that when those towers came down, and when George Bush said he was going to launch a war on terror, that that has in fact now become a war on liberty. And the plea bargaining system in America is such that you're put into prisons that are gang-ridden, that are violent, that are brutal, and certainly no way that we would ever consider putting people in prison. You're put in those conditions, and you're faced with a choice under a plea bargaining system. You're told that you may well not get to court for four years. So you'll spend the next four years on remand in one of these brutal prisons. You're told that your legal fees will be between one and two million dollars. And you're told that if the jury finds against you, you face life imprisonment. Or, you'll be told, under a plea bargaining system, if you plead guilty, you'll just get two years and then we'll let you go. Prima facie evidence of any kind being put forward. And so Cameron, giving the impression that this has been through fair process, frankly, I think is a disgrace. But the all-time low on this was when William Haig was interviewed on this question. It was at the end of an interview about Syria, and he was asked on the day the extradition took place, what about Mr. Tappin's case? And Haig said, I'm too busy for that. And he turned his back and he walked away. And what the British political class have done to freedom, democracy, and liberty in this country is they have collectively turned their backs and walked away. Shame on them. A third Tibetan has died in China in three days after setting himself on fire in a desperate protest. Rights group Free Tibet reported on Monday that 18-year-old Dorje died inside a government office building in Aba County of Sichuan Province. He lit himself on fire outside the building and collapsed after walking inside. Several other Tibetan groups and the Tibetan government in exile have also reported on the incident. Dorje is the 26th Tibetan to die in self-immolation protests since February 2009. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, March 7th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and ddarko2012 and ddarko2013 on my YouTube channels. So everybody, I got attacked again, right? My computer had a crash, and I lost all my articles last uh, last video in between. So it, it just helped me take another, what, an hour or two hours to get to this second video. So any, either way, I hope you appreciate this because I'm kind of getting tired of doing it. I'm getting tired of dealing with all the bullshit. So either way, Holder Executive Branch reviews of targeted killings count as due process. So it goes on here, it says the Obama fascist regime believes that the executive branch reviews of evidence against suspected al-Qaeda uh, leaders uh, before they are targeted for killings meet constitutional due process requirement and that American citizenship alone doesn't protect uh, individuals from being killed, Attorney General Eric Holder. So especially if you're a veteran that actually helped serve this system, right? So uh, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't exclude you 
uh, either way, right? And just like um, Nigel Farage said, you know, they could trump you up, uh, put you up there, and march you up in front of um, the court system and that their little maritime court system, and uh, you know, they could say, oh, well, that's that's justice. And I cover article after article after article um, about uh, certain individuals, like the Madame. Uh, this is a good example: the Madame uh, in New York here. Who was just caught up in the uh, underage child, whatever, whatever it was. It was basically a, a prostitution service for the elites, and um, she gets bail. Well, she's got, she's going to get bail by but the guy that actually was in charge of what mega upload, like a downloading thing. Yeah, he was denied bail. But if you pimp out underage um, people, then you get bail. Um, if you murder people, you get bail. But if you do things, copyright infringement, or you talk out, uh, or you protest, or something like that, uh, you can be denied bail. Uh, you can, uh, you know, basically accidentally throw a piece of lint, uh, a cotton on the ground, and you can get fined $75, or drop a, a dollar, you know, like a little bank note on the ground, and you could actually get $75 fine in the But you can be a company like Monsanto, and you can be causing all kinds of stillbirths, and, um, and be messing with people's health, basically killing people and uh, sterilizing them, and you'll be exempt from it. IRS accused of intimidation campaign against the Tea Party groups. More information on this. Links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Defending Tea Party from IRS assault, it says the Internal Revenue Service is demanding information from Tea Party groups nationwide. Information that is clearly beyond the scope of legitimate inquiries. Information that violates the First Amendment. It said they talked about it last week so in just two days uh, the author and this website has already seen 30,000 Americans sign on to the petition demanding that Congress conduct oversight hearings on the IRS action Colorado court says students can carry guns on campus so it's like I said before you can't legislate freedom it says here the University of Colorado overstepped its authority when the school's board imposed a ban on the carrying uh, carrying of concealed weapons at its four campuses the state Supreme Court ruled on Monday said the court said that the concealed carry law passed the state legislator um, and it trumped the school's ban because it did not cover, carve out the school didn't they didn't carve out an exception for the state's flagship university. The university was quoted as saying we're disappointed that the state supreme court has taken away the what the university believed was a statutory and constitutional authority to provide for the safety of the students, faculty, staff, and visitors like at Virginia Tech and the other schools where um, these students go around shooting and, and nobody could do anything about it and the police get there about a half hour afterwards. But it doesn't really matter because uh, all they have to do is go back and then carve out an exception and if they do that then they'll get it. So. But uh, here we go. Uh, U.S. tells South America to shut up about legalizing drugs. Drugs. Remember this, February 28th, 2012, I reported on it. Uh, basically, it's because uh, South America and Latin America, they want, to, uh, they want to end the drug war, basically. And they're asking for the U.S. to recognize that. But while Biden was in Mexico, he rejected drug legalization talk. And he was quoted as saying that um, if they do legalize it, it has to be uh, provide a government apparatus for the distribution of drugs. Well, we, like we've already covered before, the government already is the biggest drug dealers, and <laughs> so they are the direct apparatus. Uh, you know, you remember that uh, individual? Trying to remember his name. He was a big dude. He's a black dude, and he was on Infowars coming out and saying that he had actually worked for the CIA and they were in contact with him, and he distributed drugs throughout the hood. So, uh, if anyone knows, remembers that guy's name, I, I'm trying to remember. I think I even donated to him. It says here, Lulsec uh, leader Sabu was working for us as FBI. So, hacker, real name Hector uh, Xavier Montsegur, helped U.S. authorities bring charges against five others. And remember, uh, Siri and Danny, uh, basically from CNN, who they uh, put out there as their little propaganda mouthpiece to attack a sovereign country, uh, Syria, was called out, right, as what he was. So CNN and uh, Anderson Cooper, uh, what did they do? They went and did damage control. So there's some people that actually think that Anderson Cooper himself is actually a CIA asset. So. So a LulzSec leader betrays all of Anonymous, attacking the hacker Hydra, why FBI's LulzSec takedown may backfire. And it goes, um, interesting timing, just about the same uh, time that we had our story concerning how LulzSec kept its own site from getting hacked. 
The news was breaking that the key leader of LULSEC were being arrested in large part because of their leader of the group had become an FBI informant after they tracked him down last year. Anonymous hacked WikiLeaks release Stratford emails were stored on an FBI server. So after uh, the revelation that this individual was working for the FBI, it revealed that the FBI had even provided him with a server onto which the data was transferred by the hackers. Next up, we have, and people would, you know, just one quick thing. People may uh, ask, well, why would the government do that? You know, why would they do that? Well, they do it to themselves so that they can get more power. That's what it is with your money. I mean, it's simple as that. Because there is no threat, they have to create the threat. Just like terrorism, just like the war on drugs, you know. They deal in drugs, they deal in terrorism. The Obama phone program, so it goes on here and it says that the free uh, phone program is meant to help the financially unstable who cannot afford access to a cell phone. Why would they want to do that? Police give a direct line to cell phone searches. It's a walking GPS <laughs> device. That's why. Even, uh, eavesdropping, and if they, you know, that's why they try to do what? They put little RFID chips on the homeless, so... Eavesdropping antennas can steal your smartphone secrets that processors and smartphones and tablets leak radio signals that be, uh, betray the encryption keys used to protect sensitive data. How to get anything through TSA nude body scanners. A blogger exposes a loophole in a $1 billion fleet. Jonathan Corbett claims that he could easily smuggle explosives onto a plane and strip search scanners banned in Europe over cancer fears. So instead of this being treated as, you know, let's just get rid of these things. They radiate, you know, they don't even work. Um, you know, the governments are the biggest terrorists, and no, they're going to look at it more of, uh, in the way of, well, it's ineffective. Maybe we need to get more intrusive, you know what I mean? Oh, it's not, a, you know, it's not doing a good enough job. And this individual is actually trying to sue the TSA. So a Burbank woman detained for more than 10 hours for painting nails on a Southwest flight. So Daniels asked the passengers on both sides if they would mind if she painted her nails, and they said, no, go right ahead. But the flight att attendant wasn't so obliging. She said, weren't you just told not to paint your nails? And I said, actually, I wasn't. I was just told it was offending people around me, so I did the right thing and went to an enclosed area, she said. So this is something that pisses me off, guys. Look at this. So she was getting so loud when I was sitting in my seat. I was like, just stop. And when I was like, I said, you know, basically, she probably said, fuck off, because she wouldn't end the conversation. She added in a phone inter interview. She goes, Daniel's slip led to her arrest at the airport. When the flight attendant was uh, interviewed, they said um, they're going to charge abusive profane language don't you love that how everything is so uh, uh sterilized you know because you know when i call out my bank before yeah uh later i got it closed but it wasn't until i told the chat operator to go fuck themselves that they closed me down i'm just tired of the hypocrisy guys <laughs> you know this is a government that's responsible for killing and raping people, pimping out people, you know, children that brainwashing, sticking with vaccines. And if you don't, put your parents in jail, you know, oh, the McCain and them. Oh, we care about humanity and human and safety. It's just a big, obvious fucking lie. I wish people would get it. India Mall's web monitoring agency creation. So India's government is considering setting up a national agency to monitor Internet traffic as well as access cybersecurity threats on real-time basis. Remember, the same country to compile the world's biggest ID database back in 2010. Senators to hear a pitch for tougher cybersecurity. Help protect the nation's water and telecom uh, grid. But remember this, a Russian hacker temporarily shuts down the water supply in Illinois. FBI probe launch. Well, no, it wasn't. They just hyped it up. Attack was actually caused by what? A failure of the water pump. They're investigating a water pump failure. And for dense people who just don't get it yet, why would they want to do that? Why would the government allow themselves to be attacked? So that they can take the cybersecurity infrastructure that's set up and they'll crack down on people that are talking on the Internet about this type of stuff. Sub nanosecond timestamps could f uh, feed regulatory trails. Talking about the economy, but it could throw a wrench into things. So we have this as well. ECB blows up Europe, creates super immune elite bonds, throws credit market into disarray. Fed uh, is mulling sterilized bond purchases. Bernanke has signaled that he would consider another round of bond buying to support the fragile economy. It's being called a novel approach. Uh, ben Bernanke's son will graduate with $400,000 of student debt while well, he drives a Ford Focus and has a 30-year mortgage, remember? Some little cover news is uh, Timothy Geithner, the Treasury Secretary, was recently arrested and let go. Mass banking resignations signal a purging has begun. Fifth of British new graduates are jobless, and the jobs that they can get are are low-skilled jobs. Electricity is set to become a luxury item in Australia. No joke. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.